Switch to Metro by T-Mobile and save more. Get the new iPhone SE now with 5G at the lowest price in prepaid. Just $99.99. I post a lot. And thanks to the iPhone SE with 5G and advanced 4K camera, I'm snapping and sharing while my followers are smashing the like button. Switch and get the iPhone SE for just $99.99. Only at Metro. Save more versus national prepaid brands. Limited time offer. In-store only. Price for 64 gigabyte model with eligible port. $60 plan and ID. See 5G device coverage and access details at MetroByTMobile.com. Live life at your pace. Click the banner or go to visitwilliamsburg.com to discover how. Because here in Williamsburg, life moves at one pace, yours. Here, our waters are splashing and rejuvenating. Our history is for seeing and experiencing. Our theme parks are for riding and sometimes flying. And our great outdoors are yours for exploring and restoring. It's all waiting for you in Williamsburg. Book your trip today and live life at your pace. Anun, the Celtic underworld ruled over by the fairy king Gwynapnod. In legend, it is from his mystical domain the wild hunt issues forth, and those unfortunate enough to encounter this ghostly procession can have their souls carried back to the fairy kingdom. One of the entrances to this chthonic realm is said to lay beneath the sacred and picturesque site of Glastonbury Tor. An impressive cultural site in the English county of Somerset that, historians surmise, has seen continuous human occupation dating back to prehistory. One of the reasons that this site has held such significance from pagan cultures even up until Christian settlement is thought to be that the large conical hill sits on a nexus of mysterious earth energies. These energies are claimed to pervade the entirety of the English countryside as well as connect other ancient and sacred sites throughout the world. This case file join the theorists as they connect the dots and dows for answers concerning ley lines. I fucked it up, didn't I? How does he do it? Where's Braden? <laughs> I mean, listen, we might as well just get this out of the way. All right? Here's the truth. The ego got too big. He wanted too much. We wouldn't give it to him. And he started his own show. He's gone. No. Actually, what happened is uh, he forgot to clean his barbecue. He, oh, he burned he, to death. He tried to, you know, warm it up, try to cook it, open the lid. It exploded. He is pretty much looks like Darth Vader now, and he will never be back on the show. Well, he was, at, yeah, you're right. He was burned to a crisp, third degree, 90% of his body surface. And then he, he still had the strength to try and fan out the flames. And then he broke his neck with a towel trying to fan it like last time. <laughs> and that's a true so, story. Uh, in the arms of the yeah. angel. Rest we, we, signed him, we signed him up for the dark man procedure. Anyways, nice. this is the Braden. <laughs> Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 239. Yell directly into lay, the mic. Lay lines or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get laid lines. Nah. Uh, I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. And yeah, Braden is burned to a crisp. And maybe you'll never see him again. <laughs> no, it's actually uh, his mom's 60th birthday. So we gave him the night off to go to dinner with his old mama there. Family yeah. comes first. And she Happy does birthday. listen to the show every once in a while. So... Happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday, Lori. <laughs> like she'll hopefully, ever listen to this one. <laughs> Lori, hopefully you got plenty over-the-shoulder knife holders for your birthday. Really one of those. Thank you, Lori, for dealing with that gigantic man baby for 30 years. <laughs> She's got two of them. Two of them. There's two of them. <laughs> She's a fucking trooper. Mr. Conspiracy and Braden, both in the same house. Oh, I can only imagine. So I'm surprised she made it to 60. That's amazing. <laughs> accomplishment. <laughs> Anyways, this week we're talking about ley lines. Ley lines. The super See, this voice. I didn't even crack the books for this one. I know all about them. 
All right. I've seen all the commercials. Right. I even I had a sleepover once in like ninth grade where we actually called one, charged to my buddy's grandma's, you know, credit card. It was perfect. Ah, twenty nine dollars a minute. Yeah, it was great. Fantastic. Hey Andrew, how are you doing? <laughs> are you lonely? <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm staying in. Well, yes, talking to, to weirdos on the phone. The topic of ley lines uh, comes up. It's more of a new age idea, but it's a, we're going to get into it, but pretty much the modern is, it's like more of a metaphysical, spiritual term that kind of connects a lot of ancient sites with just kind of like, you know, how if you like in yoga and meditation, like your, your body chakras, the ley lines, I guess you would consider them like the earth's chakra points. Or Namaste. Day. Uh, Dan, how do we? Where do the ley lines come from? Where's the term? Well, I suppose from? the everybody, everybody who's in the esoteric circles, as we are uh, involved in that kind of uh, subject matter, probably knows ley lines or hears about ley lines, and it is the the grid of earth energies, which are telluric or geomagnetic or magical, spiritual, some type of kind of nature of that of that some kind, which usually. Uh, are associated uh, or actually running directly through uh, certain sacred sites. Uh, it could be standing stones. It could be um, usually you have them associated with places like Stone Stonehenge. Uh, people will reportedly draw lines on maps that connect to the uh, Egyptian pyramids all the way over to the Great Wall of China. Any type of uh, large mysterious structure that has been built. Uh, Machu Picchu, Machu Teotihuacan, Chicken yep. Itza, all those. Tenochtitlan, any of those places. Uh, people would argue that there are ley lines that run through there and that- Disneyland. Disneyland one, right? could very well be. I actually <laughs> looked, I looked up some ley lines in Canada and Calgary, Alberta is at a cross-section of ley lines. I don't know what- I was just there. I don't know what the power that it brings to Calgary. I'm telling you. Bad weather listen, and... All that power from those ley lines still couldn't make Alberta a cool place. <laughs> still sucked. Right, and there's a, there's also something, there's a ley line that actually runs directly through the studio, right through my forehead here, approximately. I think I'm going to move one way or the other. But it is actually the only way this podcast got successful, if you didn't know. How, how else could uh, four duds... Get Are we calling this successful? Hey, we got a couple thousand a, downloads. That can also explain the hairlines, maybe just like a little bit of like there's know, side effect of the ley lines. There's too much energy running through our bodies that our hair. It's almost like yeah. a radiation sickness, actually. I believe absolutely. The trade off. It's a trade off. The trade off. Yeah. yeah. Everything. <laughs> Sacrifices we make to put out a good product for you. People. You're welcome. Equal exchange. It has to. It has to work. This is this is uh, Full Metal Alchemist rules. It's <laughs> equal exchange. Uh, so, um, now the idea of ley lines, that kind of, a the idea, like, uh, uh, Zell has previously mentioned is that the, I, this, this idea of these energy lines running throughout, uh, throughout the earth, uh, forming certain, uh, some people would say sacred geometric shapes and whatnot. Uh, that idea is relatively new. The idea of having some type of, uh, lines or paths that move between, certain places and that are marked by certain supernatural happenings like that idea has goes back you know hundreds if not thousands of years i mean even in the 1800s you had people uh in the british isles who actually believed in things like uh fairy paths which were trails that connected certain hilltops in the countryside and these places a lot of a lot of folk around those areas and these villages would consider these places very you know, potentially dangerous that if you were traveling down these, um, these, these paths and you were caught unawares or you know, just kind of wandered into one and unintentionally, you could potentially be, you know, snatched up by some fairy spirit or, uh, and taken away. And so it's not, um, the, the idea of having these, these, these undercurrents of energy or, uh, spiritual, uh, happenings, things well, is, and is it's not, like, and they were everywhere too, right? Because I remember reading, I think China called them dragon lines. Dragon lines. Yep. The yeah, and then you had spirit lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like in North the, America. And the Aboriginal people in Australia had their own name for them. So like cultures all around the world had these like, had a name for this energy. Australia doesn't exist. South Africa, my bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so uh, they seem to be, yeah, it seems like transcendent cultures, like this 
idea of like an energy line. Not necessarily, they never really, in those, they never say like a grid, but like a, like a line connecting sites, I guess. I mean, it, it kind of goes with like, if you go to the other side, like a straight line is the best way to get from point to point. So it makes sense that lines, like these lines go straight rather than like zigzag all across. Yeah, and setting setting aside the entire like uh, the current definition of of what we the popular definition that we that we set as ley lines, the original idea of ley lines, like the the originator of this idea, um, the person who kind of coined the term ley lines was Alfred Watkins, who was an actual landscape photographer uh, in Herefordshire, uh, who actually noticed that there were certain ancient sites that seem to line up with others in the nearby area. So uh, Watkins, who was uh, used to work for his, I guess he was, um, he's kind of, he had a, his family had a mildly successful, like a several businesses that they ran. They had a flour mill, a hotel, a brewery, apparently. And Watkins was always tasked as uh, kind of being the outrider for the business. And he would represent the business on his, you know, he, so he'd go, he'd leave out their village and then he would travel around the countryside, uh, you know, drumming up business for their business. And in doing that, he took up a, a, a very, I mean, he had a pretty sexual, successful career as a photographer, like a landscape photographer. I think he actually invented like an a, a, a entirely uh, new method or system for uh, like light exposure and things like this. So he took a lot of really great pictures. And while he was doing this, naturally, he came upon uh, the, you know, the multitude of, I guess you could say like uh, the, the standing sites, the the, bar- the hill barrows and all these places that kind of, uh, that are spotted all over the uh, stone you know, circles and all that stuff over. It. It's pretty much like the United Kingdom is where it's this, where it's his right. Anywhere over, like the British Isles, like you have just tons of this stuff since the place has been, you know, it's been in, inhabited for thousands of years and you have pretty much all of these things. But he, he noticed that certain sites, certain p- points of interest lined up in like certain long straight lines uh, for miles. And he got this idea that perhaps that there was, Something, some significance for this, uh, this alignment. So um, he would kind of look at the prominent features of the la- landscape, and you know this would include things like uh, the, the standing stones, like you said, stone circles, barrows, mounds, hill forts, earthworks, ponds, uh, like man-made ponds, anything that was kind of uh, either pre-Reformation churches, things like this, any of the places that you could pretty much fine in his travels. And he would see that all of these lines connecting these ancient sites seem to represent routes that perhaps people had traveled in prehistoric times. And so he felt like the, that there's some kind of underlying significance to this, whether it was, um, uh, he, he thought it he was thought like perhaps, trade or like, trade or some type of like religious rites or something like that. Like he didn't necessarily go right, right to spirituality kind of style. Right. But And so he had these, uh, he coined the term ley lines to describe these, these alignments. And he used the word lay because he noticed that the Anglo-Saxon word for lay, which meant like a clearing of woods. And you had a number of towns and villages that actually had like ended in the word lay or began, had the lay. L E Y at the beginning or at the end of their name. So they always seem to like line up on those lines. So he found that that was kind of something interesting. Now, now that we have that kind of idea that was set out, uh, it became a bit like popularized to go out and find these lines since you could pretty much find them anywhere in the British Isles. Like we said, like the British Isles is notorious for their amount of just like, you know, cultural sites all over the place riddled with like ancient sites like that like everyone knows like stonehenge but there's hundreds if not thousands of smaller similar sites right just like little tiny areas with you know strange looking stones or stones that have been arranged uh you know intelligently uh then and a lot of these sites they have no idea what they used them for like the 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 use for these or what the intention of the builders were for some of these sites has been lost to history and we have no idea why the people put some of these things where they put them and so the kind of idea is trying to figure out like why why would you put 
something there. Why would you move these rocks? Some of them are huge. Some of them, you know, it's not something that you like, okay, I picked up a stone and carried it from my Some of these stones are, you know, the size of a, a person and you moved them into these, these areas and you just put them there. And like, why would you do that? <laughs> so like these people are at this point. So after he coins the term ley lines, the word gets out and it's like almost like a, people go like ley like ley line hunting, seeing what type it's of like connections new, like they can do. It's ancient Pokemon Go. People are just out there fucking. <laughs> yeah, getting that people out, out there. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's actually, that's a really good comparison. <laughs> Grab a survey map, a pencil, like one of those little compasses and a ruler. And a Pikachu and, while you're out there. Yeah. And, yeah, try and, try and <laughs> pretty much try and find the straightest line through as many of the sites as you could and then kind of try and deduce why, why those all seem to be in a straight line. I mean, yeah, and they... It, this whole idea received considerable attention and they even formed an actual organization called the straight track club in 1928. And this was actually like a kind of a, a refined... track cr- club around <laughs> <laughs> was unathletic. <laughs> uh, this was a uh, pretty much a group of, uh, you know, ro- people who consider themselves refined Nerds. and educated and they would go out in groups uh, and go and go out and visit some of these notable ley lines. You know, you go out there for a day, you know, have your picnic or uh, even pose for Watkins is photographs. So it's a finer things club. <laughs> yeah, it's quite. Yes. I find myself a line. And then, so you had the, you had this entire thing, but, it seems that interest kind of waned uh, into the lead up to the Second World War. So you kind of had this idea, like the ley lines of these tracks, kind of uh, everything kind of, you know, I mean, you're were, you were involved in an entire global war. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing <laughs> to me that they would start an entire world war just to distract us from ley lines. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing. That, you know, that was the original reason that the First yeah, World War. That makes War's sense. Time. That makes now, sense. Now, didn't he at Watkins actually find that there was a type of like pine tree? that seemed to grow along the lay and it kind of like marked, it seemed to mark like the line. Right. Like Watkins, the trail. Watkins made the observation that there were a, a disproportionate number of Scots pine trees, a type, of, a type of pine trees. And he found these on these ley lines and he kind of made the, the, the deduction that, or tried to make the connection that these were actually the descendants of trees that had originally been planted there in order to mark the ley line. Oh, cool. Well, I mean, so it would make sense kind of if there was like an ancient civilization and it was so like the direct they try and say in the in the distance there's a there's a feature, there's a hill, a mound. They try and go sh- as straight as they can through there. They clear the way. I don't know, it kind of makes because if you look with our road building, we get we will choose trees and we'll plant them along the side of the highway. This is like part it's mainly for landscaping for us, but maybe for them it's like Okay, we'll just know if we plant this low row of trees, even if it gets overgrown or it's not used for a few years, we can kind of, it's kind of marked. It's kind of what it seems like to him, at least. At yeah, the, and, and that was his kind of overall theory was that these these paths, you know, not necessarily having the entire uh, uh, new age view of it, but be, like his was a very much a, a practical view of these, of these alignments saying that uh, it, these places where, you know, you they would include like places of higher elevation. So you assume that these ancient civilizations, these ancient cultures uh, that inhabited the land uh, w- would use these air, these alignments to kind of get from place to place. Like you'd be able to get up on top of a hill. You'd be able to look down and be like, okay, I need to go, you know, using pretty much line of sight and then being like, okay, we're going to move here, uh, go here. And then, <laughs> you know, be able to find your way and not get lost. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of that. And, there's a lot of good stuff that, like we said, the straight track line, uh, the straight <laughs> straight track club kind of came out of it. There's actually some other uh, uh, like archae- archaeological theories that kind of fell in with that later. Like a, he was not formally, Watkins was never formally trained in archaeology. He was never, he was just kind of a, uh, which which I found kind of interesting that is that archaeology was kind of just like a hobby for the longest time. Like there weren't really... Um, you know, in the 1800s and like up to the, leading up to like the early 1900s, like a lot of people were archaeologists were just people who would go out there and just kind of dig stuff up. It they, was never like a, they just a found formal. The mound. They yeah. found the mound and they started digging. Fucking, like, yeah. cool. History teachers with fucking hats and whips that would go out on the weekend and bring <laughs> things back to museums where they belong. Right, right, exactly. A pick and a toothbrush and see what they could find. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of them didn't have really formal training. Would just kind of go out there and you know make these connections and things. And and for a long time, like a lot of Watkins stuff was kind of written off as being like, okay, well he was never really trained. He never really didn't really know what he was doing. Um, but some of the stuff that he that he kind of hypothesized, I think I think one of them he was talking about how um, these these alignments because uh, they were up on top of these hills and places like this that he he kind of deduced that the the British Isles were actually more forested, like there was more forest there and they were more covered with trees than they had been in the recent past because, um, and a lot of people were like, no, it's always been like this. It's always been kind of just like these couple patches of forests and things like this, but we've actually, you know, they've gone on to find evidence to support uh, Watkinson's theory that there, no, like it was, there was a lot of forest. There was a lot more forest that existed there before um, than previously thought. So some of the stuff has kind of come back to be like, oh no, he's actually, some he, of the stuff he was he talking was right. about kind of has merit. <laughs> so way more heavily forested in ancient times. Or- mm-hmm. So they, so then these would kind of support the idea that like, yeah, you got to get up on top of hills so you can see over the trees. But um, that was kind of his idea with going doing all this thing. But some of the stuff, like I said, it's some of the stuff that people thought about was kind of crazy before is now coming back and be like, well, no, maybe it's not that crazy. Right. And I was also reading too. So like these ancient cultures of the area, like the British Isles and stuff, well before like Greek mathematics, now that they go back and like measure these ley lines and like the ancient site building there, they almost seem to have an understanding of like Pythagorean theory, you know, like triangle theory. So they say, they like through these ley lines, not necessarily that they're like the spiritual version of them, just like just as like a culture building the straight lines and all these sites, they realize that these guys knew like Greek mathematics in some fashion before it was written in history. Yeah, and and some of the standing stones, like especially Stonehenge and other areas, like uh, those were it's hypothesized that some of these places and some of them have been observed to actually line up with certain celestial bodies, um, either during eclipses or solstices, um, you know, and equinoxes, uh, some of these all kind of line up with, with these ideas. So they did have, you know, ancient cultures were a lot smarter than we give them credit for now. But <laughs> well, and that, and that was like highly debated for a long time that no one really gave them the credit, like these ancient civilizations for like, I can't remember right now, but it was like May 8th or something, this area, there's this ley line that runs right through the UK, our current UK. And on May 8th, that's the direction of the sun passing overhead. Right, 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 right. That's so what like, yeah, that's when. So now they've gone back and like, so some of these ley lines in this area, like in the modern United Kingdom, are actually astronomical in nature and like mathematical in nature. And they're not just like, they're not just trade routes and they're not, they had actual significance to the people at the time. And when we, like no one really gave them credit for a lot of years, but now they've gone back and be like, oh, there is like. Right. I think you're talking about St. Michael. St. Michael's Day or something. St. Michael's alignment or whatever. And it's like on that day, this ley line that's been discovered, like all these sites line up, boom, boom, boom. Whatever culture was there purposely built these sites along the path of the sun on that day. I just always wonder if somebody got just really bored and was like, just going to follow the sun. Just like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to start walking. Like just a Forrest Gump, just like got it. Like, all right, here we go. And then I started running, you know, (laughs) (laughs) just started following the sun. I just wonder if somebody just ever kind of did that. It just, that kind of stuff is kind of mind boggling. It's like, yeah. So you built the first one, right? You wait till the next year, the sun goes over on the same, the same angle. You build and you mark the next spot and the next spot. It would take a while. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, because we now know like, like chicken, chicken pizza, chicken pizza. We went there and on, the solstice, like the snake slithers down the staircase. That's like that's absolutely mind boggling. Some of that stuff. Nuts. Like they are purpose. But how many generations is it going to take to fucking complete that though? To right? get, yeah. What you're off by one degree and the snake doesn't really go down the stairs. Like, nah, <laughs> nope. Start again. Start again. <laughs> it's like slinky. You got go right to wait till next year. You got it wrong. Got to wait till next year. Torch it. This thing makes me sick. Get rid of it. Yeah, so uh, it kind of makes you think like some of these ley lines, like that's kind of where we're about to talk about next, like the resurgence in like, you know, the 60s of like more spiritual, like spiritual, like these these lines had like a purpose. They were energy lines and the ancients knew 
the direction and the crossing, and they purposely built a lot of these sacred and sites. And they build them for, for peace, man. That's it, man. <laughs> peace and well, love. I mean, yeah, the, it, like like Zell said, the, the 1960s were a, a kind of resurgence into the the idea, the the, the whole spiritual reawakening of of Western hip, culture. Got some uh, hippies getting really stoned. It's called like, what about ley lines, man. It's called LSD. Yeah, and it really <laughs> opened up your mind forever, man. <laughs> um. So yeah, you got the revival of of ley line theory, which uh, you know this one once it when it when it popped back up in the '60s, it it pretty much like completely changed the entire nature of the theory. Whereas uh, Watkins in his original iteration of the idea uh, had this uh, a very utilitarian view of these ley lines and being like, okay, it was it was a way to get from one place to another, and then this. That theory was replaced with the uh, more spiritual and esoteric idea that you had these lines of energy that this is why people put things here is because to take advantage of these uh, certain th- these lines of energy and the places where they intersect uh, to, to oh, generate either uh, some type of I, I, I mean. It's there's I'm tons seeing, of things. <laughs> all I'm seeing is a bunch of fucking PhD students in a basement sharing a joint, being like, "What about ley lines, man? We haven't talked about forever, man. <laughs> Come yeah, on. It, I mean, it, it kind of pulled in Chakras, a lot of chakras, <laughs> man. <laughs> it pulled in a lot of stuff from. Uh, I mean, very similar to you know the 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 art of feng shui. Um, you know, most people know that that feng shui. Uh, the idea of, of moving. I think most you people are coach. Yeah. You center your house. <laughs> you gotta get now the right it's very much right like just about moving your rooms. Um, yeah. But we talked about it before um, during our Chinese pyramid, uh, like during the Chinese pyramids case file, talking about the different types of feng shui. At least there's two different, uh, like, I guess there's two different schools or two different categories uh, of it. But, you know, at, back then and some, some points uh, during uh, the Chinese history, you were having places like you would build entire, you, you would base entire building complexes on these, uh, you know, on the principles put forth by the Feng Shui. So, you know, the way that you aligned your buildings with uh, bodies of water, uh, which, which were back then they believed that these were the bodies of water were d- directed the flow of the universal chi energy like this kind of like the, like the, the way to the, the bodies of water were like directed by the universal energy like they were right sprung out into existence and they really they regarded that so they, yeah you got to align your building this way to harness the universal chi It'll right flow you want you want you. you want your building to as be as, as auspicious as possible you want it to be you know everything to have good luck you want everything you so said we got to face our doors to this direction um you know if you're cooking food like if this is a place that you're going to prepare food you need to put your door on this side otherwise like people are going to get sick so i don't know <laughs> hey you got um, in those days you got to do whatever you can because people yeah. got sick a lot yeah and died and died a lot easily easily all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So any anything you can do to increase your chances, even if you just believe it, like the mind's a powerful thing. You're like, all right, if we do this, we're going to be yeah. a little more healthy. It, it ain't weird if it works. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Even uh, just the placebo boost, boys. Just, that's what I mean. Huge. Just like Huge. we did it, so like our chances are much better. We're good here. Uh, so what, one of the big the biggest names in the kind of uh, that can be attributed to the to pres- the present theory of ley lines, and this is kind of now we're moving on to the. We're going to probably just refer to the ley line theory specifically as the spiritual one uh, is a guy named John Michel. So uh, John Michel in his 1967 book, The Flying Saucer Vision, uh, Michel kind of promoted this idea that I think most of us are now familiar with. That it's it, You've heard about it somewhere uh, that um, he was a very big proponent of the ancient astronaut theory and he, he made the connection – uh, and had the belief that these ley lines uh, were actually being taken advantage of by extraterrestrials uh, during our prehistory, uh, when humans actually worshipped aliens as gods that came down here. So the um, aliens knew the ley where the ley lines, the power grid of the world, were. So they built the pyramids on top of them to harness the energy. Yes. So I mean, it it it's plays a big part in the you know the what pyramids if, are power plants. The what if they uh, the whole thing? What if they built the ley lines first to construct the pyramids? Oh, they somehow manipulated like our the magnetic right? like, energy of the planet or something. Or well, that's the big the biggest thing. The question that we always have is always like, how the fuck 
did they create these megalithic structures when they didn't have the tools? You know, you know, we always, Dan's going to argue, oh, well, we the humans were resourceful and we could have, but so many people are, there's no fucking way we could have done this back then. So it's like they they were able to harness some type of energy that we don't know about. And maybe that's how they were able to do, use, like maybe that was the original reason for these ley lines was to build shit like that. That is, that is a, actually one, a, like a theory, like the pyramids were built on these PowerPoints and they used these certain type of materials over an aquifer and that the vibration of the, the aquifer against the base of the pyramid would resonate with the ley line, which would create you know, some type of wireless energy that could be harnessed. And that's why there's the obelisks. And like that, the, so that theory goes on from that. There's like these places where these centers were built on these PowerPoints, the pyramids, the obelisks, and it was like a wireless power system. Oh, so you tell me they had 5G all the way back then. <laughs> yeah. was, that was the OG. OG 5G. OG 5G. That's, so that's how they're playing Pokemon Go. And they're really vaporizing uh, their brains with that stuff. All right. Yeah. So I'm. Um, yeah. If you if you go with with that theory, yes, it's like they had some type of uh, our ancestors had access to and, and ways to manipulate or store and utilize this energy, as well as the extraterrestrials that were coming down to visit our planet. Uh, you know, the, either the the UFOs, like some people would say that either if you want to go the global spanning. Uh, civilization route. It's that you know these these ley lines were used to power ships uh, that were able airships that were able to travel from city to city. Uh, you know this is why you get the uh, certain certain cultures seem to have uh, you know similar art styles or some type of building style that you know should they shouldn't have. Uh, you have those things or the other idea that you know alien ships were using Earth as perhaps a, a kind of like a, a stop and go and coming over here like and a then refueling refu station, yeah, yeah, refueling station for their ships or their engines, you know, energy fields, whatever they use to travel uh, throughout outer space. You know, they would come down here, manipulate the energies, land on top of the pyramids, charge up, and then take back off. So. Um, that's kind of the idea that was kind of put forth. So that, that all of that started in, in the '60s. So the ley lines is like that. This is a relatively new idea about having these uh, ley lines being actually uh, like having energy that can be manipulated or harnessed. Right. So there's that's that theory. Have. Like the ETs might have done this, and then so uh, Michael's theory was was it Michael Mitchell? Michel. 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 No. Michel. John Michel. His theory that the, the ETs, when humans became too materialistic or whatever, they would leave. And then humans of the of the ancient humans would use these centers to try and re-engage with the aliens, trying to like bring them back, bring back the gods. So right. they in that theory, it's like they would build these places in order. And that's why they were so grand and so like massive and so otherworldly because they're trying to bring back the ETs who had left because we were too selfish and we liked shopping too much. We do. <laughs> we do like awesome. shopping a lot. I do. I got a problem. I get on Facebook in. Marketplace <laughs> for yeah, hours. This guy's selling so fucking problem. Lululemon pants on Facebook Marketplace every other All day. All the time. I'm selling everything, man. <laughs> everything. And then I'm buying more. It's awful. It's a problem. <laughs> He's an addict. I've had to put like child locks on my phone. How many so pairs of shoes do you got? Online shopping. I'm not big on shoes. No, just action, stuff behind me. Just action figures. That's the problem. Oh yeah, action figures, collectibles, comments, all that type of shit. Uh, Metallica concert shirts. I just bought a, I just bought a Metallica Kill 'Em All fucking for like from '82. Original, original, OG, awful. Why? Would it cost two hundred bucks? I don't fuck two hundred. Oh god, I wish. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I fucking oh, wish. No. Well, I traded in a bunch of my other concert shirts. Okay. Like I traded in like uh, Twisted Sister and a Huey Lewis and a. A vanilla ice shirt, so I, you know, wasn't too bad, but still. Well, we'll go explore Andrew's um, pissing one anyway. We'll explore it in after hours. It's a materialistic addiction. <laughs> yeah, problem. But yeah, so you have um, you, you have this still the kind of idea that um, it, if you pull up a, a map of ley lines, like if if you type it up, if you type it up into Google or wherever, you try to even find a book that has a. Uh, you know, representation or their kind of idea of where ley lines think. I really, th there's no standardized version of ley lines. I think it'll be, it's very difficult to find that kind of uh, like, a, the, the, this is the, like, this is the ley line society uh, official map of ley lines. I couldn't find one. 
There is no uh, there is no official map. There's some that show honestly 10,000 intersecting lines. There's some that show only intersection intersecting lines over like major structures around the world. Specific or primarily megalithic. Yeah, and, and and the megalithic structures and they also I've seen some that also connect uh mysterious locations. So even some that are purported to run through the uh the Bermuda like the Bermuda Triangle or the Dragon Triangle in the South China Sea or whatever, right, like any of these, any of those areas, even natural formations like uh, Uluru and uh, you know, certain like Aborigine, uh, you know, Ayers Rock and stuff like this. That those are also attributed to be put on ley lines. So yeah, it's it's pretty much like any any map that you can kind of pull up if you can draw a line. Like you can make you can pretty much make a ley line. It seems yeah, but like they don't anyways. want you to have, dude. Think about that. You had that map, you'd be the most powerful guy in the world. That's true. That's right? true. You can't. Yeah. That's just too much power for anybody. That's true. Absolute so. power corrupts all. Absolute. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I I did hear a I did hear a theory, and I I couldn't I didn't have time to kind of go and follow it up, but it was <laughs> there's the idea that perhaps like even before uh, World War II or during World War II, uh, at least the United States military or the uh, the Western powers uh, uh, militaries. Uh, became aware of ley lines and how to uh, uh, take advantage of this energy or to be able to to kind of utilize it in some manner or other. And apparently a number of military bases are built on ley lines or ley line nexuses. Of course, because that's what the war was about. They're trying to hide the truth. They didn't want us to know about ley lines. Yeah. yeah. That's how they're powering the UFOs right now. <laughs> I'd say so. Seems legit. So then you had, uh, not only do you have this, this idea that uh, kind of propagated during the 60s, but then you had this, uh, it, there's an interesting little kind of schism that developed in the, the ley line community at, at one point, like in the early 80s. So, um, but we might want to take a break before we talk about that. Sounds like a beer break to me. <laughs> All right, we're going to gra- take a short break, grab a beer. We'll be right back. Only at Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade to 5G and get more savings with the lowest price on one line of unlimited 5G. Just $40, period. That's it. Taxes and fees included. Plus, more choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones from brands you love, like Samsung. Switch and save more. Only at Metro. Lowest price versus major national prepaid brands. The fraction of users greater than 35 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds, and Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus T-Mobile due to prioritization. Video streams and SD requires eligible port in and plan. See store for details. Live life at your pace. Click the banner or go to visitwilliamsburg.com to discover how. Because here in Williamsburg, life moves at one pace, yours. Here, our waters are splashing and rejuvenating. Our history is for seeing and experiencing. Our theme parks are for riding and sometimes flying. And our great outdoors are yours for exploring and restoring. It's all waiting for you in Williamsburg. Book your trip today and live life at your pace. So one of the things I found fascinating about ley lines is you have this whole idea of um, it. It is the it is the original like Earth mysteries. It is it is one of those ideas that is very uh, integral to that that kind of belief system that you have going on here. So uh, it, on the one on the one thing you have this idea that you have a very physical representation manifestation of these ley lines. Like they are very they are visible. They exist. It's not something that. Um, you know, for some, for some, you know, for intents and purposes, it's just like, it's not something that's kind of just out there. It's not like astral projection where you can't really see it. You can't really, there's not really a way to verify it. You do know that these things do exist. You find there and, and a lot of these, uh, sacred sites and things are in places that nobody knows why they're there. Um, still very mysterious. And, but then you also have the idea that, uh, these are in order to, to these, uh, if you have the belief that these are energy sites, that there's some type of energy that is that is manifesting here, uh, it, you know, whatever coalescing in these areas, it has to be measurable. It has to be something like it has to uh, to be able to be scientifically proven. You should be able to to do that. So, 
you had these two archaeologists in 1983, uh, uh, Tom Williamson and Liz Bellamy, who published a book called Ley Lines in Question. So both of them had an interest in ley lines. They were kind of part of like the, the whole ley line community. And they, you know, went in on a formal investigation of these, you know, uh, looking for the evidence to support that, uh, to support the beliefs that these ley lines really were some type of energy dispersion or energy field right. that was able to be to be measured. And so w- this book <laughs> this book kind of like hmm. brought down the hammer on the uh on the entire kind of ley line hmm. community and it it kind of pretty much <clears> like <throat> kind of kind of gave it a good gave it a good kind of crack right down the middle uh because uh they kind of made the point or highlighted the the point that like we've been saying the british landscape is so highly covered in all of these cultural sites standing stones um you know, natural, strange natural formations or out of the ordinary natural formation, all these things that you could, you could essentially draw a line and it would be statistically unlikely that that straight line uh, could be drawn through the British countryside without lining up with like three or more sites. Like it's almost impossible to be able to do that. (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah, like three or more. I would say, but we did talk about the one who has like, it has dozens. And so uh, this entire kind of thing drove kind of a, a wedge in into the ley line community where you had some people who, um, uh, I, which I, I found this thing, is, it, it's really interesting how this kind of shaped up because they published this book and you had academics. These two were, they were formerly trained archaeologists. You, you had, uh, you had the, 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 uh, you know, the, whatever you could call them, the ivory tower, if you want to call them the ivory tower, whatever, the, the high academia, you know, formal academia, took really no notice. They said, like, wait, we don't really care. Like, we don't, uh, we're not really interested in this, right? And then you had the people who were, um, you know, they could consider, you know, they're either colleagues or their friends uh, in the ley line community. Um, you had that things. They hated Williamson and Bellamy. Like, they... Republican, and like overtly hostile to the whole. So idea. these are like the internet sleuths of ley lines. <laughs> um, but you, I mean, you had people who were like proponent, like staunch proponents of the ley line theory, ley line spiritual energy theory, and then with when they published this book, saying that well, these these sites that you're lining up, like you can line up anything drawing these lines and being able to line up some of them, and uh, you know, so the entire ley line community. A lot of them were kind of like some of them were on their side. So there was like there was this little divide that kind of popped up between the ones that said, like, no, we need to go out there and we need to go out there and study and find more evidence to support our theory on this. And then on the other side of that, you had uh, the other group uh, that were like, you know what? We don't need proof. We believe that it's there and we feel it and we, we, you know, it's there. We don't we don't need it's called having faith, man. Yeah, well, this is this kind of goes with that. Like, this. what's the what's it called that humans can find patterns in every anything? It's like pro. Are you talking about pareidolia? That's like no, it's, it's not pa- apo. I'm quick. I, I know there's a word for it. Right. Apo- I, know, I know what you're talking about. Apophenia. Ap- right. Ap- right. Apophenia. Right. It's right. Like humans can find patterns in anything. So like. In support of these people debunking the ley lines, they're like, "Hey, you can draw a line." And you're going to dissect this and intersect that. And then you could take the angles of that and you can find meaning in this and this and this. Yes. I mean, there's no denying that you can do that. You could go downtown in any city, connect all the bars with lines on a, like connect the lines, find the angles. You can find meaning in this shit. Yeah. But the difference is when, when I think about it, like the difference is, yes, you can, you can connect patterns and lines and make diagrams and make deductions on pretty much anything. Different types of trees in the forest, like certain trees grow in certain parts of the forest. You can make a line and be like, okay, that must, there's lots you can do. But with like ancient sites, those are what's like left over from an age gone by, like 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, whatever the thousands of years. So it, it's not quite, in my opinion, not quite the same as like, yeah, you can find patterns and everything. But in like these old things, it's like, okay, they've survived the test of time that, and they're still in this line. It makes you think like, okay, well, they, some of these, I'm not saying all, 
you would be foolish to say like every there's the fucking lines connecting every mythical site across the world and they all mean something. But as we talked about like the the May 8th thing, like there is, it seems like there is like some ancient sites that were purposely built and they have astronomical alignment. So it's like, I know what these people are saying. Like, yeah, you could find the pattern in anything. And the, therefore your ley line theory is bogus. We can't find the energy. So scientifically, like, obviously that's like, yeah, that could definitely happen. But when you like take into consideration that these sites are so old and some of them seem to be built astronomically, it kind of like, it's gotta be, there gotta be a, like, there's a sliver, a, a grain of truth in there. It seems like just a little bit, there's something in there. Just a bit. Gotta be. Uh, yeah. And I mean, if anything, like, like I said before, um, yeah, or like Andrew kind of said before, like this is, I, I do, I do appreciate the, the, the thought or the sentiment behind ley lines and being like, okay, you want people to get out and you want people to appreciate these sites that have been here for thousands of years. I thought one of the, uh, one of the areas that they, they found or is associated with ley lines is this really kind of neat place called Sil, is Silberry Hill. Um, which is, uh, I guess people have said is the quintessential, uh, it's named the quintessential example of the ancient, ancient British mound. And this, this thing is huge. Uh, it, it's similar in height. It's 129 feet high. Uh, and it has a similar volume to the Egyptian pyramids. And it's, it was built around, uh, I think our, they've dated it to around maybe 2400 BC is when it was built. That's, that's a, a lot of volume in that fucking mound. And they have no idea what it was built for there there's a number of con contending theories for for what it is but they have no real evidence there's no burial artifacts um about using it so even if they say it's a tomb or a burial mound there's nothing there there's nothing to 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 signify or you know lend evidence to that that theory right. that this was built it's, for somebody it's significant enough for peter gabriel to sing a song about it so it's got to be pretty <laughs> famous right so i mean it is it is part it is part of the uh like the stonehenge like Av averbury uh like uh, unesco world heritage site so it is i mean it is important it is it is one of those it is associated with that thing and it is when you look at it i mean some people I mean, when you look at it now, uh, it just looks like a weird, sh weirdly shaped hill, like a weirdly uniform shaped hill. But there are other, you know, people who have studied this site. Some people say that it actually, it was a stepped pyramid at one point, like, and then the steps got filled in. So well, it's, it, when you look it up, it's because we're like in the English countryside here, there's really no significant mounds. There's like rolling hills, some patches of forest, and then this, this thing towering out of nowhere for no reason. It's like fucking weird. Yeah, it's it's a prehistoric artificial chalk mound. And it's just, it, nobody really knows why it was built and, and what it was put there for. Uh, it could have been a ceremonial site. Uh, it could have been, like we said, it, people kind of think it's like, well, you know, it's built, it's a burial mound. It looks like one of those, but they're like, but we can't find, nobody's buried there well, to our knowledge. I want, I want to ask, I want to go back to the, like, why do they think it used to be perhaps maybe a stepped pyramid and then filled in. Have they like excavated a portion of it and found like the rock, like the that was one. That was one of the, that was one of the illustrations I saw. And then I didn't follow it up. It's just like, but they said that the, it, it probably had been like filled in at some point. Like it, now that it, you look at it and it's completely like, it's so uniform. Flat kind top of, like mount, I said. yeah. It's, yeah. But they're saying at one point it might've actually been like a, a kind of stepped over pyramid. Um, not like a pyramid pyramid, but it's like, it was like a stepped, Something, something like able to yeah. get up there easier. Um, but yeah, um, for, really cool. you know, and, and Watkins even commented on this, you know, the originator of the ley lines, like he, he said that this was one of the terminal points, which he, he referred to the, the, the points where the ley lines like began or ended. Um, and this one might've been like an ancient settlement. Um, Egyptian. Uh, you know, well, not that far. <laughs> <laughs> it's Egyptian, man. Step pyramid. Absolutely. Come on. They spread out uh, around hey, the hey, we, hey, there's a there's a Stargate in fucking Iraq. Well, it might have been it might have been a ceremonial site <laughs> to England. Come this on. This could be a Stargate under this mound. We don't know. No, yeah, no one's yeah, dug through it. Yeah, totally. Come on. <laughs> uh but yeah, he he put this as as one of those uh you know on the as an example of a terminal point. So it's like you could climb up on top of this thing and people would make either a pilgrimage to this site. Uh, that's why you find, you know, certain kind of paths and whatever leading straight to that area. Or you could probably find uh, lines of monuments or whatever leading up to that. 
so yeah, it's it, there are there are sites that are associated with ley lines that are mysterious and still have are st- still will be for a long time because I mean. I don't. I don't know how you would even go back to some of these when you have you have no idea what some of these things were built for. You don't have the intention of the uh, the builders to kind of go off of. Uh, we don't have the technology anymore to utilize them. Right. Right. Come on. Uh, yeah, and it's like uh, you have tons of these places all over. Um, you know, the British countryside that are just sitting there, kind of for people to kind of go out and look for. And I think I think it's pretty neat. Like I think it's I think it's really cool. Like I mean, um, if you want to, I, the, the idea that anyone can be um, a ley line hunter, you know, you can you can go out there and and find these things. All you really need is a map and a straight edge. Essentially, um, you need a map. And you can and then, be a straight line track club member too, man. Yeah, you can make <laughs> your own deal. Get out there. Listen, and, you want you want to pay a hundred bucks admission fee to the studio? I'll show you a ley line. No problem. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Let's go. Right here. But like talking about like these, the culture of like this area, like prehistory, right? Like stone, no one really, do they not really know who, how Stonehenge was, who built Stonehenge? Isn't it like folklore, like fucking Merlin built it? Like, like, no, oh, there's, I mean, there's tons of you know, stuff that lays around it, but uh, there's a lot more because stone, I think because Stonehenge is probably one of the most studied, if famous, because it is the most studied uh, uh, place in the thing. I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, they found out, I don't, they're not 100% sure what it was originally built for. No, I think that's, that's the crazy thing. Yeah. Um, I remember reading it was like a Roman temple. I don't even, as pre Roman. It says I like, think it, yeah, I, it's yeah, like, it's what's like, the, what's the period? Like Neolithic or um, yeah. something like that? I'll have to look it up, but that's the last. I remember learning about the fact that it was possibly a Roman temple. Like, that would be strange. I, like, I don't, I, I think that's what they I mean. found I don't, the area. We don't know. That's the yeah. crazy thing. Like, no one, like, yeah. it, was it Romans? Was it fucking King Arthur? Merlin? Like, right. wi- wizards? I think recently, recently they found where the, the stones were actually quarried. And then, like, the, I think that was the most recent development. Well, they found, yeah, Stonehenge. the stones, like the, so those, what are they, the Sarsen stones, like the really big standing ones, were, they were like right. quarried like hundreds of miles away. Like, like right. pretty far and away. Um, yeah. And it's like, that's where they got them. How they got them there is still kind of like that's up not, for uh, debate. Up for, it says by the 17th century, uh, the theory emerged that Stonehenge was built as a Roman temple in honor of the sky god, Callus. But isn't like Stonehenge was built well before Romans? Like well before? Well, ancient. We're talking ancient ass Romans. Super ancient. Maybe fucking, bro- hey, Romulus and Remus we're, themselves. We're t- built yeah, this we're fucking place. talking. Okay, <laughs> like, well, right. well, why would they go out to the middle of nowhere? Because they went on a <laughs> pilgrimage. All right, <laughs> yeah. for but that's the, the god Ka- Callus. The god Callus. There this you go. Guy. That's what I mean. Like the, Come the on, theories boys. of Stonehenge. Like no one really knows. No, like what was it a burial site? Was it uh, was it some type of pilgrimage? Yeah, that's site? where was Merlin it, is buried. Was fucking like, Gandalf like, yeah. built it. We, mm-hmm. I don't know, yeah. boys. It, I mean, you, you could really say, yeah. If you, you crack open it. those sarsen stones, that's where Merlin is. He's actually yeah. in. He's encased like one of those fucking monks who encase themselves. Well, in fucking, those, I'm one hundred percent sure that is from a we movie need somewhere. Him. <laughs> now I'm one hundred percent sure that is somewhere Merlin, there. There's a movie where Merlin's in the sarsen stones. I I guarantee it. Oh, that's awesome. I guarantee it. Someone, someone, like someone tell us what movie that is. That Wizard in the Stone. You didn't see it? <laughs> it's fucking good. Okay, I'm a, <laughs> Wizard in the Stone. I'm gonna fucking. That's what I'm looking up first thing after. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I, I I think it's really brilliant uh, how much how much interesting folklore is is associated with a lot of these places that you have these things. Um, what, one of the other ones I found out is the um, uh, there's another place that's called uh, the the Queen Stone. And so there's the Queen Stone, which is in the village of Simon's Yacht. Uh, and it has these, it's a really strange looking rock. If you pull it up uh, and it's, it's like, it has these really strange uniform grooves that are carved into the exterior. And this is one of the stones that actually Watkins kind of marked as another kind of, um, uh, as a point of interest in, in his ley line theory. Um, but here Watkins figured that perhaps that this was actually, uh, not just a, a marking stone or something like that, or like a, a ceremonial site, but it was essentially that this was utilized for human sacrifice, oh, that these fuck. grooves were cut into the stone in order for wood, wooden poles to be, <laughs> oh, no. to be inserted, to hold <laughs> prisoners, uh, who were then to be sacrificed. To make the ley lines more powerful, of course. You, that you know what though that totally like what does that remind you of? 
that completely reminds me of that fucking the Masonic line of death, the thirty third parallel. Explain Does right it, now. Explain more. Yeah, no, like totally, because that's what they say. Like the, the Masonic line, um, which is the thirty third parallel. They've done like the math, and basically with this line, base, there's like nine or ten different death rows that line up with this. Right there's one in uh, there's one in Mississippi, Georgia, uh, Carolina or South Carolina, Pakistan, Iraq, Lebanon, and basically every single state that's in line with this 33rd parallel is for the death penalty, and every single country that also pa- passes through it has the death penalty. Really, and they're saying like this is what like this this is the Masonic line of death, and all those sa- those are basically just ritual sacrifices to make this line more powerful. And that's where they draw their strength from. So maybe this is, ju- maybe the, the 33rd parallel is just a, a, a fucking ley line. Oh shit. Okay. 33 de- degree. Well, because like they, like you said, Dan, there's like churches built on these ley lines and stuff like that too. Right. So maybe that's where they got those ideas from too. Like maybe yeah, it was going to make them more. That's another interesting point too. Um, some people kind of argued against the idea of being like, okay, so like, like Andrew mentioned, uh, we have, uh, you know, certain churches bit there that are like medieval iron age or whatever, you know, post neo, not Neolithic churches. And um, it, uh, people will kind of point to those as examples of kind of against the idea of the land. It's like, no, these churches were built after the fact. But I think I think Watkins actually contended with that being like, no, 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 no. Uh, I think he had, what was the idea? It was like site evolution or something like that, where, where essentially you had, these sites were sacred before these were they, they had they had significance they had cultural significance before the churches were built there and then the churches were built on top of those sites and mm. that's why you get a lot of these places they were built yeah. on top to stifle the energy to hide it they didn't <laughs> want people using it right so they want people wor- worshiping these false idols on these lines and it takes away from the power pulls, pulls the power away on. yeah like distracts you from it that maybe that this power that's what we're missing uh, that's exactly what we're missing. That's what we're missing in the world. I couldn't agree more. How do we reverse this? Get rid of all the churches. I gotta go. I get on board with that. I go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Well, so let's make some, let's make some new churches. They're pretty pretty. <laughs> oh, they're pretty. Yeah, yeah I, I get, get that, that too. But so would be nice. renewable energy that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, right. I it's a transmission. Every church is on a ley line. <laughs> doesn't matter. Get every church is on a ley line. That's where they yeah, built the churches there. Because the exactly. power. We can't trust them. Get rid of them. Hmm. I mean, you'd have to check. We have to, cali- have to calibrate our ley line detectors. That's true. We need the aliens to come back. Tell us how to use them, too. We're, too ma- we're way too materialistic right now. They're not hey, coming back. Was, boys, you need to crack open that fucking stone and wake Merlin up and be like, come on, bud, how do we use these things? <laughs> wake up. That's true. The prophecy uh, shall come true that one day Merlin will be cracked from his stone casing. And he alone shall save the world from death and misery. I guarantee Excalibur that's was on a ley line. Beautiful. That's Did you read that off like fucking some type of like? No, that's a, Dead that's, sea a, that's a real thing. That's the real. Was that an Aramaic? That's like. That was fucking yeah, fantastic. that's that's the lost chapter of Revelations. Actually, wow, Merlin's gonna show up. There's only beautiful. a couple. There's yeah. only a few people in the world that have it. I got one in the studio. If you want to see it, you got to pay though. <laughs> well, you were there when it was written, weren't you? I wrote it. <laughs> oh, <you're right. laughs> uh, All right, where were we? I fucking I, I, I don't lost know. What it. All the rails. <laughs> it's gone. Um, yeah, it, it's so you have these. We we mentioned uh, Saint Michael's before uh, the Saint Michael's line, which uh, runs all the way across and seems to follow the sun uh, across the British thing. Um, but Saint, where it begins, I believe, is a, a place that has is a bit of interesting piece of folklore is you have this place called St. Michael's Island or or St. Michael's Mount, which is a tidal Island uh, that lies just in Mounts Bay off the coast of Cornwall. And this place is- So when you say tidal uh, Island, like it only shows up at low tide or something like- Right. Well, it's like, it's like, you know, you can only really access it by land at like low low tide. tide, Right. And then when high tide comes back up and then it's there. Uh, But actually this place is where you have the legend of Jack the Giant Killer come from. Really? Um, that this island, uh, this island is associated with a, a giant named Cormoran. And oh, dope. Cool. Wait, fucking D- CB Strike. Fucking Robert Galbraith. I read it. I got all those fucking books. <laughs> Cormoran Strike. Fucking that's who he's named after. It's 
Great book. Um, Read them. Yeah, so Cormoran was apparently so this this hideous giant uh, who had a uh, like a whether well, it's described as having like at least like a single eye, so it's essentially a cyclops. Cyclops, yeah. Uh, uh, and he had six fingers and and six toes on each of his uh, appendages, and um, but he I'm was a uh, know, terrorized. Player. He terrorized the countryside around that area apparently. And there's there's one or two stories you have you have the he was slain by Jack the Giant Killer uh, after you know the people had had enough of his shit. And they sent uh, their assassin after him. Uh, but there's also a story that I came across in another book. It's like another uh, kind of local legends or whatever, that there was a king. There was actually a king from one of the villages uh, or one of the cities that actually was like a sorcerer and actually used magic to like fuck over Cormoran, basically like attach him to a stone, like bind him to a stone uh, and, and to keep him away from stealing cattle and, and livestock and things uh, that he kind of, he, this, this King, and it, you know, I don't, to me, this sounds like a very much like a Merlin kind of thing. This guy went out uh, apparently on a pilgrimage, like the King went around, learned all these esoteric sorcerous secrets and then came back and like kicked the shit out of this giant <laughs> essentially. <laughs> and like, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it was a weird little story I came across. It was only in one book. I didn't, I didn't see it kind of a, uh, and a couple other ones, but it, the most popular one is the Jack the Giant Killer legend. That is, that's where it comes from. So I, you have a, a, a number of things associated with these ley lines, not only just fairies and, you know, perhaps fey folk, but you also have giants and all these things. And it's just an interesting little piece of tidbit. A folklore. <laughs> the ley lines almost encompass all the things we talk about. A- aliens, <laughs> giants, cryptids. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You can't draw a line anywhere without hitting a couple cryptids and a couple megalithic structures, I think. Uh, I mean, everywhere has its own cryptids. So, I mean, I it, you could probably draw a line anywhere and find a whole bunch of them. Uh, but we talked about, we mentioned about it earlier, uh, like right at the beginning of the episode, you were talking about how other cultures have their own kind of versions of these. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just um, ley lines, like like ley lines, like specifically, like those ones are very uniquely, to me, are very uniquely uh, British. British, like they're very, yeah. They're very like UK, that that's what they are. And it, it's kind of, I think that's something they can own and it's kind of neat. But other cultures have their own kind of versions of these. Uh, you think you have the, uh, the, the, the Quechuan speaking uh, cultures of South America where they have uh, what is called a, it's a huaca and huaca? like a huaca. Yeah. It's just like a huaca. Huaca, huaca, huaca. <laughs> um, huaca, huaca. And a huaca is like a, a revered site. It could be an object, could be a, a, a monument um, of some kind or anything like that. But then they would say that these huacas would have to be built along a, per, a processional or ceremonial line or route. Mm. And then these would be built for, uh, like it would be built as a kind of in like in, uh, along like a sacred ritual, like along with a sacred ritual, they would take advantage of these things. So these were referred to as seques, seques, is the word? seques. <laughs> um, and then you mentioned the Aborigines, the Aborigines have their own version of it called song lines, which I found extremely fascinating piece, piece of cultural, uh, uh, Thing that the that phenomenon that they have that these song lines are essentially they are exactly kind of what what the name implies is that the the Aborigines actually used like because they are a big you know oral tradition culture is a oral tradition is a huge part mm-hmm. of their culture um, they used actual songs to navigate. Like they actually use them to, in order to traverse like uh, the, the interior deserts of of Australia, they would essentially like write entire songs that would mark out landscape and like landmarkers so that they could go through uh, these areas and not get lost. That's cool. That's really cool. Super cool. So it's like some of these, and they they, like a lot of these songs, like they, they incorporate uh, celestial bodies, uh, certain star uh, uh, constellations, uh, stars, things like this, uh, natural formations and things like this. So you'd sing a whole song so you can, See, I would imagine these songs would be like days long. You'd long, just be singing yeah. this whole song while you're like walking. Like <laughs> yeah, full stairway, we're talking. We'll go full stairway. Full stairway, yeah. All the and way, I got an iron butterfly, yeah. just like, like and I got a Vita all the way. But yeah, and like a lot. So like, <laughs> so I mean, like, so a lot of these cultures, not just the ley lines, but around the world, a lot of them are lined up like through cosmology. Like 
almost like you're just walking through the Australian desert like air guitaring for like 12 hours like (laughs) there's a big rock over there when you hit the valley on the left take a right (laughs) that's what I mean though so like they would say like they would start their line from the rising of this like stellar object like from this star or the sun or the moon on this day like so I'll they're not just random, and so if you if you want to say like okay the ley lines okay you can just there's so many places through the you know modern day UK you can draw a line boom boom you hit all these things ley line sure, but some of these cultures like it's now like proven like they were astron like astronomical like in in nature like on the rising of the sun or the the when this star peaks over the horizon on this day this line leads this way and that's the, like like in the city of Cusco in Peru there's like this sacred like lying through the city and it's like, so these people knew like to them, these lines had energy, whether you can prove it scientifically or not, like to the cultures of the time, whoever came up with them to them, it, it was powerful. Well, some people claim that they can still find them. And those people would be big on the, on the technique of dowsing. I've seen it firsthand. It works. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, dowsing's if you you've probably seen a documentary with the guy the guy with the two sticks or the girl right. with the two it, sticks. There, there's a number of there's a number of techniques. Uh, I don't think there's any really standard one. I, I, so I think different areas and different people kind of use different things. I know different um, material it, of sticks and right. Yeah. You'll I mean if you look it up, you usually see two people like uh, it's it's two two metal rods that are kind of bent at 90 degrees and they hold them. They got that little stick in the middle and they fucking bounce it around like they did in the 90s. The devil sticks. <laughs> the devil sticks. Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's how you find the water. Yeah, wherever the, de- wherever the devil stick falls is where the water lies. Everyone Absolutely. knows this. Um, but yeah, it's, there's also some people that say like, oh no, you've only, you have only can only use like a cherry wood stick that's in the shape of a Y or something. Like there's... there's Well, they call I it... So it's like, it's dowsing or they call it like... What they call it? Like wit... Like witch, witching or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Another term is like witching, so that's... whatever. So yeah, so two 90-degree rods of some type of material, usually metal, but sometimes wood. It it varies widely. And so these sticks, you're supposed to hold them loosely in your hand. And as... So they're meant for finding underground aquifers, like water underground. Or anything. I, I've heard they can use... You can use them for water. You can use them for gold. You can use them for people say diamonds, anything. But for the most part, they're used for water. For, You've seen them used for water. I No, I think for the most part, they're used for water. Like they are. Because that was... Whatever you believe, before we had modern technology, people... they the, Water was key to survival. Especially like you had a ranch or like anything before you had pumps and electricity... So the people walk around. So you're you're trying to build a homestead. You want to build your house over the over the well or the well close enough. So they walk around, and as you get close to the aquifer, the sticks will cross, and where they cross is where water flows, or there's like a reservoir of something. And that's that's it. There's really no. They don't know. Can't really tell you how it works, but. I'm just going to give a personal experience. I'm, I'm not going to, you can make up your own decision. We were building a house out outside Upper Glen in Glen Rosa. There's no water, uh, so it's like a little rural community in Kelowna here. No, no water. So they need a well. So this one guy, the guy who's building the house, he knew a guy who could do this. So he said, so he brought him out, and he he fucking got out his sticks. I didn't actually. I never like picked up the sticks. So I'm not sure what they're made of. I, they looked like metal. Could have been. So I'm gonna say they're metal sticks. He came out. He walked around the property. He trucked slowly over this one spot, and the and they crossed. And he goes, "Drill here." And we're like, "No, we're way. like, Fuck we're, off, no, really? No, we're, yeah, that's what my. We're like, no, whatever." So we get the engineer out. He brings his like little fucking device, which like fucking shoots radar into the ground. It can tell if there's a voice, like he, whatever the device, I can't remember what it was, but he's like, yeah, here. Sure enough, this motherfucker. Really? was right there. That's fucking crazy. I'm not, I, that's all I can say is I witnessed it. He did it. And we're like, we didn't believe him. So we got the engineer. He came out. I was like, yeah, I'll drill here. Like that's a, a 25 feet down. There's an aquifer. Like you should have good flow 
uh, for a homestead up here. Like, because they wanted to have like a little ranch, the house, and like a barn for cattle. And sure enough, the guy was, he was on it. I, so it's, but there's no way to prove it because we, we were getting a little bit of argument before. He could, you could look at, the, say you're like, you're just well-versed in how, you know, because water flows downhill, water's going to pool in a valley, same underground as on above ground. So if you're just really good with it, Maybe the sticks kind of lead you in the right direction, and or maybe the snow. But whatever, whatever it is, this guy that I seen, he marked the X, and the engineer marked the X on the same spot. They drilled, and they had enough water for a full ranch. That's, that's all I know. Wild, that's all man. I can say. To, that's all I can say about it. It's the only thing I've ever seen about it, and that's it. But it was pretty that's crazy. Wild. It was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, there's there's tons of videos on the internet. I know I saw the, the just recently, only recently, there was a video of a, a Ukrainian soldier doing it, like in the trenches, like dowsing for water and found water, like in the trenches. Just like there's, he's like had the little sticks out and uh, walking through the trenches, and then been like, he's like right here, dig right here, and then they started digging, like clean water. Clean, clear water what? coming up out of the ground. Like it was, I mean, it, yeah, it is an interesting little little piece of thing. Um, it has been tested in certain scenarios. Like it has been tested. Uh, you know, I watched another video from a uh, uh, it's either the BBC or the Smithsonian. I can't remember. Um, they did like a double blind study, and they had people in come in who who claimed to be experienced dowsers. Um, it didn't turn out exactly as as they kind of. Uh, as they maybe it's good, but maybe it's it's maybe it is magic, and maybe it only manifests when you really need it. And they're doing it for the wrong reasons, right? So the I, lines I, are like, I just we're remember not give this guy water. I just one part stuck out to me when um, they told uh, one of one of the participants. Uh, they told him that he only got out of the six tries that they did. He only got or ten tries. They said he only got two. He only got two correct. Uh, essentially, what it was is they took a they took a number of uh, plastic bins. Uh, they filled ones with sand, and then they put one uh, like they had water in one. I think it was a bottle of water. They had like a bottle of water in one, and then they had them go out with their dowsing sticks, and then you would essentially just try to you know they would mark which one they believed that 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 the dowsing sticks marked, and whatever. When they got out there, they told them like, "Hey, you didn't find that. And you got like two right." Really, like we had people who had no idea what they were doing, and they also found two, or he, you weren't successful at all. Uh, the one guy was kind of like, um, uh, he believed that dowsing, his dowsing ability came from God, and he divine. said, divine. You know, he's mm. like specifically, he's like, you know, it, it's God. It comes from God. This is what happens. And they told him like, well, you know, you didn't do that great, whatever. And he's like, oh well, God's just having a laugh. You know, he just loves a good joke. <laughs> he's fucking with them. And oh, man, that's what he said. So well, you could like, say okay. that about a lot of things. God, God does. Man, man. God's <laughs> been having a serious laugh for the last thirty-four years of my existence. He's been, so he's good. been laughing, yeah. chuckling. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is, yeah, it is interesting. Like it, it is. I mean, I saw the the video of the Ukraine, and it's been around for generations. Been around for hundreds of years. Uh, this this dowsing technique, and whether it is something, um, uh, it is magic or it is uh you know a, a tapping into those uh mysterious earth energies or if it's just something uh like Zell is kind of saying about like maybe it's just something subconscious like somebody who is has experience with like the lay of the land and they use the the sticks just to kind of like focus their attention or um you know focus their uh, their perception on like what they are and it just helps them kind of being like okay this is where the land is this is a, a likely spot for it to be um, for water to be, maybe it's just something like that, which is, I mean, it's still, it's still pretty neat if people can do it, uh, consistently. I don't, I don't think I've seen anything. I, 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 I try to look up like if there's like a consistent, somebody who's like 100% on, but of the experiments I saw too, um, uh, where people were kind of like money was on the line, uh, and I didn't, wrong didn't reasons, get, didn't do good. Well, there's also, <laughs> Danny also po posted that like short documentary about not finding water, but like at the stone circles in England. Right. As they right. came with the dowsing sticks towards the, like the circle. Right. So he had like the experienced guy, I can't remember his name, and he gave it like to the host of the show. He's like, just hold him like this and walk towards and they crossed. Right, they were at the, they were at the roll right stones, I believe. Yeah, uh, like a stone yeah. circle there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so whatever, yeah, like water, they used it before, but yeah, you said like, other energies, whether either it be like diamonds or minerals or these rocks give off some type of energy that seems when you get close to cross the sticks. And the host was like, he was taken back at nonetheless. He's like, 
he was like, he, cause he walked and he had the sticks crossed and he walked away and the sticks went away. But I tried to look up like, why, what would cause them to cross? Because I know like there's, right, there's the two types it, of magnetism, right? And well, it, and it kind of, I think it kind of depends on which ones they're using because they're using the ones that have like, the, I think it's like the, the, uh, the rod, the rod is like in like a little, um, I don't know, it's like a holder and it's not, it's, so it kind of moves on its own. Like it kind of moves of like whatever. Like it, it yeah, it's like a wood like holder with the rod inside. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that's the one, those are the ones that kind of, those are the ones that can make me a little bit more suspicious of it. Like the ones that aren't, um, like if you're holding the just 90 degree rods, just straight solid yeah, rods, you could, that seems kind of interesting. But the ones that have the ones that that's like, they're extremely sensitive. Um, and you're just holding them. Like if you step forward, like the, like momentum itself will like push those things. Cause as soon as he grabbed those things, like, and he stepped forward, they move back like that. Just that, just like pushing them and then they would come back and then when he stepped back it would go out like I think it was just kind of that that it's just too many variables with it's, those ones if it were yeah. just I'd rather see it done with just the, the solid rods yeah I tried <laughs> I looked into it like there's the two magnetisms right there's like was it fucking paramagnetic and diamagnetic and everything in, that we know of is diamagnetic so if you like put a magnet to like a toothpick there's like a very slight magnetic force which will turn the toothpick sideways so some people are like saying like, oh, maybe it's some type of like diamagnetism that these sticks do. And the running aquifer under the under the ground produces some very, very slight magnetic force. And you're like, that didn't make sense to me. It's like, well, why are they crossing? Shouldn't they go like away from it? So like I, I looked into it. I was like, well, what's going on here? And no one, there was no sound theory of why they cross. Yeah. All I'm telling you is I watched a motherfucker do it. <laughs> and the engineer marked the same X. And I can't explain it. Crazy. I can't. Crazy. I can't explain it. And that's I'm gonna that's all I'm I gonna need. live for the rest it's of my real. life saying it works. And that's it. 100%. That's all I need to know about it because I've seen it happen. And yeah. they fucking found a way. Uh, if any of you listeners know people out there who are professional dowsers, uh, give us a call because uh, uh, Dan, didn't you say there's <laughs> a a, a six figure prize if you can prove it? Yeah, there there is a six figure prize. Uh, there is a uh, there is like a nonprofit organization, like it's the Center for Scientific Inquiry or something like that. Two hundred fifty grand on the Ooh. line if you can prove that you one hundred percent dowsing is one hundred percent. You know, uh, they've already they tested one guy dowsing. It was a, kind of the same experiment that that I explained before, kind of the the double blind whatever. Um, same. Same kind of experiment as that one, but they're they're happy to work with you on designing an experiment. Um, uh, whoever, if anybody knows anybody who knows some dowsing, uh, you maybe can get yeah, cash money. It's online and it's super cool. <laughs> uh, one thing, one more thing, I wanted to touch on because I did come across it while I'm looking about talking about ley lines and like energy grid of the world. Because like, if we're talking about like an energy grid where like energy radiates either from the sky or from the earth through these points it should be measurable and they can't seem to really measure a significant change. But then I came across this one thing saying, oh, it's something to do with the ionosphere. Because the ionosphere holds like a, you know, like almost limitless potential energy. You just can't really harness it. It's just kind of up there. Like it radiates all these fucking ionized particles. And like, if you could somehow tap into it, which if you'll go like back to the work of like Tesla and stuff, he was like trying to do it. Like that was his goal is like to radiate pretty much limit, like free energy from the ionosphere kind of stuff. So then some people are trying to make the connection like, okay, these point, the ionosphere actually radiates through these points and that's what gives it the power. But it can't, like it doesn't radiate. It's, it's, it's limitless potential energy. You just can't draw it down. Like you would need like a massive device to draw the energy downwards, to like make a current to make energy. So that was the one thing I was like, if there is energy points, it, where's it coming from? Is it magnetism from the Earth's core that's shooting up through this in these certain places? Or is it like pulling energy from the ionosphere down through these places and somehow the ancients knew where to build it? And there's, have you ever looked into the magnetism affecting like crop growth, like seed germination? I've seen that, yeah. So, I mean, they've done studies and it's, it seems to maybe work, but maybe not. Also what works is temperature control in a greenhouse will 
do with similar effects. Because we've talked about with crop circles, it seems like the crops in and around the crop circle after this like event seem to grow at an accelerated rate. So yeah, in some cases, yeah. In some cases. That. So that was the last thing I found. Like maybe these because they've talked about like maybe the, maybe there's some pyramids and stuff for like st- grain storage and like they harness this magnetic energy to make the seeds germinate and grow taller and faster and feed more people. That was the last theory I could come up with. It's just it, when they go to the sites that they're like, these are the ley lines, the power grids, the intersecting points, they can't seem to like measure it. So maybe we just don't have the tools and the ancients knew something we didn't. Or I, like I don't know. I, I was I try to go on all theories. Like where where's the energy coming from, and what what would have been the purpose? Right? There's obviously a massive purpose to building these huge structures, like Great Pyramid and these mounds and Teotihuacan and all these crazy shit. So why in those points? I don't know. It's really cool though. Yeah, it's a, it. I, I like I said, it is a it is a fascinating piece of like a little subculture and, and cultural significance for some of these areas. So, I mean, you can, anyway, like I said, anybody can go out there and find ley lines, like uh, the, the, the original definition, like the very strict definition, the Watkins definition of ley lines, finding these straight lines between, uh, monuments and stuff like that is pretty cool. Um, I, I would suggest people go out there and, you know, find your own ley lines, get outdoors, you know, go hike, you know, go hiking, find your own, take a buddy, you know, be safe, but <laughs> you never go in the woods alone. We know this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, take your dowsing sticks. Yeah, come on. Take your dowsing sticks. Go get sticks. laid. Let's do it. Get laid. Find your ley lines. Get laid, baby. <laughs> awesome. If you know something about ley lines that we completely fucking missed, make sure to message us on our socials. Go to aliantheorist.com. Find all the links there. We'd love to hear from you because, I mean, we got a week to look into this stuff. So if you're one of those people that have spent the last 25 years looking into ley lines and we really fucked it up, we want to hear from you. Uh, who do we got this week for Theorite of the Week? Uh, I specifically put in the group because I can't read that last name. I butchered it. So I was like, one of you guys take the fucking reins on this one. Chris Kemmerly? Oh, no. Yeah, never mind. Different. <laughs> we'll model last time. Yeah, Chris Kemmerly. Uh, Blue 42, Chris Kemmerly, Theorite of the Week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, and OG Theorite of the Week, too. This guy's been, been around. This guy's been, he's been putting out gold for a long time. He's the fucking illustrator of the Mongoose Files shirt. Amazing. Well, this week he dropped a fucking hilarious meme. Very Stranger Things, uh, fucking Climb the Hill inspired. It's pretty good. What's that noise? I don't know. I thought it was my. I thought it was my headphones. You guys all, you got, I didn't you guys hear all cut out for a second. So. That's some weird oh, buzzing. Really? really? I didn't hear it at all. Lines. So I'm assuming maybe it was me. That ley line. Stranger Things inspired me. That's the fucking ley line interfering with our yeah, burger ley line next is acting up. Uh, Stranger Things inspired me. What it's like to be like captivated when you listen to ATT eyes roll back the headphones go on turn on ATT you turn into a vampire and you fly away yeah pretty much yeah Chris Kemmerly that sums it up pretty well pretty much well it's Zell has found a way to leach your blood through your headphones it's It's just the newest technology technology. Zeltron and I use this ley line that runs right through the studio to do it yeah it's keeping them young vampires have evolved from drinking blood to suck in your just spiritual energy that's, what's, so that's what we've done here. <laughs> We're in the digital age. Yeah. Anyways, Chris Kemmerly, Theory of the Week, longtime OG, an OGP, actually. It's huge OG. This guy's fucking, guy's awesome. Absolute beauty. We'll have to commission you for some new art here sometime. Pretty and quick. That reminds me to commission for that new art because after popular demand, people are just clamoring for the new Sharp Tarps. Well, the new Sharp Tarps are coming, dropping July 1st. We get our new website. Uh, we're changing things up changing though. Changing it up. It's this, yeah, I'm kind of excited for this one. Um, this, with the new website, we're going to get, there's going to be a bunch of different style of shirts. Like you get the Braden inspired, uh, crop top, right? I'm sure he's going to have some booty, a, booty shorts in there too. Yeah, the but, crop you know, top, if, the booty shirt hey, combo. Hey, if you want to bring back V-necks, you can try. I mean, I don't know if they're going <laughs> to stick, but you can try get yourself an ATT inspired V-neck. Uh, we're going to be doing hats. So if you want to look sweet like Dan, we get a Dan hat. Uh, but the new thing, which is going to be cool, is there's going to be limited runs of designs, which I'm kind of excited for. So there's going to be designs that are only up for certain months. There's going to be styles that you can only get for that month. Um, so it's going to be pretty cool. And 
this new store starts on July 1st. So we're looking forward to bringing you guys kind of like a better product, hopefully something that just doesn't disappear after you wash it three times. Yeah, it's so. actually, uh, we've changed, we've moved on from our old friends there at Tee Public. got a new company. Uh, it's actually screen yeah. printed and better quality. better quality. The price is the same. Everyone wins in this situation and you get a, you can get some Dan hats. Everyone yeah, always yeah, asks, how can I get fucking Dan's hat? And we sure. couldn't get them because those are custom made. But now, yep. through this new store, we got Dan hats, limited runs. It's going to be really funny. Alientheorist.com will have all the links July 1st. So when this podcast goes yep. out, you only have to wait a couple of days and you can uh, check them on out. Yeah, you're going to be hair, hiding your hairline in no time. Boom. We got you. Don't worry about it. Full full array of you can, hairline You can tell everybody. Products. You can announce yeah. to the world that you're a weirdo just like us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Mm. If you're not supporting the show already and you want early access to the case files, all the bonus stuff, after hours, the Discord, and you want to support your favorite podcast, we really appreciate it. It's actually... One person supporting the show is equivalent to like a thousand people listening for free. So if you're one of those absolute beauties supporting the show, we salute you. We love you. And this, well, we love everyone, but we love the people who support the show. We love, love them more. more. <laughs> They're like the firstborn. <laughs> just love yeah. everyone. Everyone yeah. loves the firstborn. Oh, we don't play favorites, yeah. but you're our favorite. But you're our favorite. Lot. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyways, this week's newest supporters. We got Bones. Ron Pond 360. Nice. He's really had a life turn, then he turned around again. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Fletcher with a full year pledge. Right on. Captain Specificity goes up to another full year pledge. Legend. Ooh, we dig it. Yeah. Lewis Robert Custodero the third. The third. You know he's a fucking beauty. He's the third. third. Wow. Caitlin Johnson. Tyler Trevette. Kyler Larson with a full year pledge. Right on. Sir Frothington. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Sir Frothington. Frothington. Savannah. And last but not least, we got Kurt. Just Kurt. It's K U R T. All right, Kurt. Beauty Kurt. Thank you very much for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you in after hours. <laughs>